Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's Friday evening, 9 o'clock, and that means one thing. I mean business. Thank you very much, viewers, for, you know, uh, watching us tonight. We have a fantastic program for you tonight, and I hope that you all had a peaceful and uh, nice uh, day, days off in the snow and a nice holiday. And we're now getting back into the swing of things. Right, I mean business. Why are we here? We are here to, to, to educate you, if uh, that's the right word, and to tell you a little bit more about Islamic finance, a little bit about business, a little bit about how to take yourself forward. If you're already in a job, try and do something creative as well, part-time. And just to move forward and to educate you. If you're already in business, how to make more sales, how to get funding, if you're thinking about business, how we can help you with any questions that you have. This is a live program. Also, you can call in later with any of your questions. But let me welcome my guests for today. We have back today Dr. Humayun Dar. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Humayun. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming back. I know you're very, very busy, and thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And my next guest, an old favorite of ours, Sami Higav. Sami, assalamu alaikum. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Did you have a nice break? Absolutely. Good. Got, always got busy, busy, busy. Busy, busy. Any busy New Year's resolutions? Um, Islamic New Year. <laughs> Islamic New Year. Islamic before New Christmas. Yeah. yeah, Islamic New Year's resolution yes. is to build a very big community. As you know, I'm working on Umacom community revenue sharing. And uh, that's my ambition. So that's, I've been quite busy Excellent. working on that. Inshallah, we'll all be helping you and supporting you. Inshallah. With that. Great. Now back to you, Dr. Humayun. What we were talking about last time, a couple of months ago, I think it was November. Um, if we're just going to recap, if that's OK. <coughs> and what I'd like to do, if you just like to introduce yourself in your background first in Islamic finance. I think that's uh, why you are here as an expert. Right. I consider myself as uh, an Islamic finance expert. My background is academic. Uh, way back in 1998-2000, I set up uh, an MSc in Islamic Economics, Banking and Finance at Loughborough University, which was the first ever master program in Islamic banking and finance offered by a university in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, in 2005, I joined Deutsche Bank to work on Islamic financial structuring. And in 2007, I joined BMB Islamic, which is Sharia advisory and structuring arm of Brunei Merchant Bank. My uh, primary job is to help businesses, especially financial institutions, to come up with the Sharia compliant financial products, retail banking products like mortgages, two Islamic bonds, which is also known as sukuk, uh, equity funds, hedge funds, all these in a Sharia compliant way. Excellent. Very, very well said. Um, I've heard uh, from the last program. I've had a few people who didn't understand the terminology that was used. And I think there's five or six terminologies. Um, would you like to elaborate on those? Yeah, terminology in Islamic banking <laughs> and finance uh, is uh, very confusing, yes. uh, especially for those who do not have Islamic background, but even for Muslims uh, who are not well versed mm. in Islamic law, the terminolo terminology may be confusing. Mm. The words like mudaraba, musharaka, ijara, murabaha, and others, these are Arabic terms. And those who do not have good understanding of Arabic might find uh, these terms confusing. And I should say that in some cases, even Arabs, uh, whose uh, native or mother tongue is Arabic, they find it difficult to understand correctly the meanings of these terms. For example, mudaraba. Mudaraba is a contract between two parties in which one party provides capital, money, and the other party runs the business. 
with an understanding that whatever be the profit, that would be distributed between the two parties, i.e. the money provider and the business manager, in accordance with an agreed profit distribution ratio. If loss occurs, that would be borne by the party providing money. Uh -huh. That is known as mudaraba. Sometimes people say that this is similar to venture capital. But it's not entirely similar to conventional venture capital. In conventional venture capital, the money provider, i.e. the venture capitalist, plays a very important role in running the business. In case of Mudaraba, however, the money provider has no right to intervene in the management. Oh. Hence, we cannot say that Mudaraba is an Islamic venture capital kind of arrangement. It's, it's very unique to Islam. It is a kind of partnership in which one party provides capital, money, other party runs a business to share the profit and if loss occurs that is borne by the party providing money only. Hence we cannot say that this is profit loss sharing, this is a profit sharing arrangement where uh, as the loss is borne by the party providing capital only. We have a partnership concept in Islam as well which is known as Musharaka. Musharaka is very similar to Western partnership model. In Musharaka, both parties can contribute money and they have a right to manage the business jointly. If any profit uh, accrues, that is shared between the two parties in accordance with a profit distribution ratio. If loss occurs, that is borne by the two parties in accordance with their investment shares. Thank you. So that is called Musharaka. Mm. Musharaka is used in a number of products in Islamic banking and finance. For example, Islamic mortgages in UK are based on a concept which is known as diminishing Musharaka, i.e. diminishing partnership. In the beginning, uh, the bank may own 80% of the property and 20% which comes in the form of a deposit from the customer, the customer owns 20%. But on a monthly basis, the customer pays to the bank a certain amount to buy more and more equity and the bank's share in the equity diminishes, hence the word diminishing partnership. Mm. After 25 years, the customer has bought all the equity and hence becomes the sole owner of the property and at that point in time the bank transfers the formal ownership of the property to the customer. Mm -hmm. That is one application of Musharaka in Islamic retail banking. There are so many other applications as well. Uh, if there are some questions I would be very happy uh, to answer. Uh, we have a question here and I know. <laughs> go on then, Sammy. Uh, go, first go of all, I'd like to say it's a real honor to, to be sitting here. I'm a student in economics, but it's really good and refreshing to have an expert in Islamic finance. Yes. Um, just to summarize, I mean, just layman term, Mudaraba, is that similar to preference shares instead of like ordinary shares? Instead of you giving ordinary shares to an investor, you give them preference shares where they don't have any voting rights, they can't dictate or have any control over the company. Is that something similar? I would say no. The preference share by and large in Islamic economics, in Islamic finance is not acceptable. Right. Okay. There are ways to structure something which might be considered as preference share, but Islamic concept of partnership is very clear that one partner in a business cannot have preference over right. another investor. Mm -hmm. Whenever, you know, if uh, I am partner <coughs> with someone else in a joint venture, mm -hmm. in case of conventional preference share, I would have preference over my partner. Mm -hmm. okay. I.e., uh, the loss would come back 